Hello and welcome to Shambani Farm. In this video, I am going to be talking about the important vaccines you need to make sure that your goats have. This is one of the most common questions that has been asked on our channel by our viewers. And in this video, we're going to answer this question right now, right here. But before we kick off, I would like to first ask you to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button if you haven't in order for you to keep getting all these nice materials that we produce every once in a while. But also, if you have already subscribed to our channel, we ask you to continue to partner with us, to journey with us on this wonderful journey of goat farming. Continue to comment on the section, uh, comment section below continue to share our videos with friends and colleagues. We want to hear your views and opinion, ask questions so that we all journey together in this wonderful journey. Now, to start off, I would like for us to first define this word or this terminology, vaccination or immunization. So what is a vaccine? A vaccine is basically a substance that has been prepared with a purpose or yeah, an intention of creating an acquired immunity for a certain infectious disease on an animal or a human being that we're trying to protect. So in this case, when we're talking about gods, we are talking about a substance that has been prepared to create an acquired immunity on a goat towards a particular infectious disease. Most of the time, these diseases we are referring to here would be of viral nature. We all know that virus are very hard to fight off and most of viral diseases do not have medication. They are incurable. We can't cure them. So the best thing that we need to do is to protect our animals against this virus by creating an acquired immunity in our animals. So in this video, we're going to then look at what are these viral diseases that are important diseases that can cause a lot of damage to a farm, to a herd, and therefore, we need to make sure we protect our animals against these diseases through vaccinations. But before we get there, I think I want for us to first speak about how vaccinations work, what types of vaccinations exist, how are they made up, and all the kind of things. So. If we talk about, you know, the types of vaccinations that are there, uh, in fact, let me start with how a vaccination is made, a, a vaccine is made. A vaccine is made by either using a live virus that is weakened or a dead virus or using some sort of uh, proteins of that virus to create these antigens so an antigen is basically a foreign substance that would induce you know a fight off from an an, an, an immune system of, of an, an animal or a human being or a li any living being so this antigen that we create then is pumped into this animal and then it causes this animal to wonder what's this foreign subject that has entered my body. And the soldiers in this animal, which is the, the, you know, the, 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 the white blood cells, then produce something that is called uh, antibodies. Now, these antibodies are basically your bullets. These are the ones that now go and fight off the antigen. Now, in that process, they need to learn about this antigen, this foreign subject, and how to, to fight it off. 
once they learn they get used to it they fight it off then at any time this antigen will try to enter this body again our body will be ready to fight it off because it has known how this antigen operates how how it is made up and all the kind of stuff so it has the information about it and knows how to fight it off so i hope from that perspective we are clear on how uh, you know the the, the 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 immunity is developed and how these vaccines are, are made so as i mentioned they could be made from live animals i mean live uh, virus or from a dead virus or proteins of that virus basically so or some uh, sort of like synthetic synthesized material that resemble that virus uh, that can be made from laboratory by scientists so in essence you know, we, we may say they are dead, sort of like vaccines, and they are live, weakened, sort of like vaccines. And the difference is, is, is that, uh, and, and here I want to speak about the advantages and disadvantages of these vaccines made from uh, live virus and made from the, the, the dead virus or just some proteins of that virus. Starting with the vaccines made from live virus, these are very strong vaccines. So in terms of their immunity kicking in, the immunity kick is, kicks in very, very fast. But the disadvantage is if the animal we are trying to create the Im Im immunity in, if it is not fit enough, it is not healthy, this vaccine could also uh, become a danger to that animal. Remember that this is a live virus. Even though it is weakened, it's still a virus. And if the animal in question is weak, is, that means we are going to uh, cause this animal to, to fail to fight off this foreign substance. And this foreign substance, even though weakened, could still be strong enough and cause our animal you know danger so that's why one of the most important principle is that you never vaccinate a sick animal never vaccinate a sick animal but for vaccines that are made from dead microorganisms or dead virus so these are very safe because this microorganism is dead it's not going to to fight off it's not going to multiply it's not going to do anything however because of that being so weak so safe it means also it is not so strong in building that immunity so most of the time you hear this type of vaccines you'll be required to sort of like uh, have a booster dose so maybe you you, you do the vaccination uh, this month and then after three weeks or maybe three months you do another shot in order to just build that uh, immunization and this is different from when you're using a vaccine that is made from live live virus now the real question that most of our viewers have been asking is basically which are these important vaccines that we must we must give to our gods and this is where i want us to 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 to, to, to focus on now so there are many viral diseases that affect gods many of them but there are some diseases that we call important diseases we call them important diseases because they have the power to impact your business your your herd almost to an extent of extinction they have the ability to 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 cause your animals all your animals to die and they are robust, they are 
quick in their in their in their in their in their attack and uh, your animal stands almost little chance of survival so these are the diseases that we're talking about here that we must vaccinate our animals against so for example there are some diseases that are viral diseases but are not important diseases by that i i, I mean and i'll give an example of a disease like off off is basically these diseases that would cause some sort of like lesions on the mouth of the goats on the outside or a little bit on the ear tips or sometimes even on the on the udder uh, or on the vulva towards the tail or such kind of places the thing about off is that your animal can actually be able to withstand it it can clear itself in within two weeks so we therefore do not consider off as an important disease because it, it, it will not cause you serious damage and it is not as so contagious as the other disease that we're going to be talking about because it requires contact real close contact for the viral to, to 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 move from one animal to the other but mainly it spreads uh, when the animal will go out grazing uh, in the morning when there's still that morning dew and the viral enters the animal through that process but even then it is not so fast in terms of spreading and 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 therefore uh it does not you know uh affect all your gods at once and expect all the gods to all fall sick and uh, you know real you know being affected uh, or the impact to be severe on the animal very very quickly escalating you know the the the, the sy symptoms and the health of the animal deteriorating quickly and die most of the time gods can withstand a, or can resist the attack of off and it can clear itself without any medication in in about two to three weeks but now we are talking about these important diseases that are going to have a huge impact in our herd if they come uh, if, 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 if our herd encounters encounters them so now the four most important viral diseases to vaccinate against goats here in Tanzania. Let me please put a disclaimer right now, right here, that this information is, or the list of these viral diseases to vaccinate against goats is in particular to my environment here in Tanzania. So if you're watching this video from another country, it is important to first understand what important viral diseases exist in your area for you to then vaccinate your gods against. It is not advised to go into another country, just pick vaccines and bring them into your country and vaccinate your animals without being sure that that disease is present in your country because by doing so could be introducing a new virus into your area especially if the vaccine you're taking is developed from a live virus even though the virus is weakened it still could then be introduced into your country and start causing a disease either exactly the same as in that other country or different somehow uh, depending on the environmental differences so it's very very important to make sure that you only vaccinate your animals against diseases that are present in your country or your environment so let's start now with the these important diseases that we must vaccinate our animals against, our goats against here in Tanzania. So number one 
is CCPP. CCPP is the short form of Contagious Caprin Pleuropneumonia. As you must have known, this is a very contagious disease. It is a respiratory disease that affects the guts very, very quickly and it can take down or it can affect your entire head in a very short period of time. It spreads very fast and it affects the lungs and the entire respiratory system so that it makes your animal weak and able to, uh, to breathe in easily and therefore uh, causes that animal to succumb to death. And because it is, you know, a respiratory disease, it is almost to speak airborne. And that's why it's very, very contagious. If you have one animal in your herd that has CCPP, be sure 10, 20, by the first day you realize that one single animal that has, be sure there are several other animals that already have it. And the unfortunate bit is that for these viral diseases, they are incurable. And therefore, the only thing that we need to do is to vaccinate our animals against such diseases. So the number one important disease in the case of here in Tanzania is CCPP, especially dangerous during the cold periods around, you know, May, somewhere from April, May, June, July, a lot of animals across the country die through uh, CCPP. And most of the farmers that you would know, any serious goat farmer here in Tanzania, if you'd go to them and ask them what is the number one problem at their farm, they will tell you CCPP is the number one problem when it comes to diseases that are causing them troubles. The second important disease is PPR. PPR is a short form of Peste de Petit Ruminants. Translate this into English, it's almost sort of, sort of to say like plagues, plague of the small ruminants. This is indeed a plague. It is contagious. It takes down the animal very fast. Five days is too long to have your animal down. Three days, four days, your animal could be gone. So, one, it's contagious. Two, it weakens the animal very, very fast. It attacks almost everywhere. Because your animal will have diarrhea. Your animal will have high fever, almost 41 degrees Celsius. Your animal will have uh, sore mouth or scabies or have you know, wounds inside the, the mouth, the tongue, etc. Your animal will have respiratory issues, you know, panting, heavy breathing, um, coughing, sometime even, you know, um, um, running nose, foaming on the mouth, etc. So your animal is going to be affected in, 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 I mean, in, in, in a very sorry manner, so to speak. You, you feel sorry for an animal who, who is suffering from PPR because they go through a huge, huge amount of attack that is just uh, too severe and too hard to handle. Especially if the animal was not very strong and very healthy, it succumbs to death very, very fast. And if it is exposed to other uh, sort of like uh, opportunistic diseases, even worse. So very, very important to make sure you vaccinate your animals, your goats against uh, PPR. The third important disease, I call this group of diseases because here I'm, I'm talking about all the crostidial diseases 
uh, especially crostidio perpharynges type C and D, as well as tetanus. These are very, very important also because, um, let's say, for example, for tetanus, goats are very naughty. They jump, move all around, and tetanus is all over on the ground. So, on the animal's pain, you always have, you always have nails that rust, just like this one here. And tetanus is very easy to then transfer from here to a goat that will just come here to scratch itself. We all know the behaviors of goats. They'll come here to learn to scratch itself and not even to care that it has scratched itself so much that it's bleeding. And then the tetanus can move from this rust nail into the goat. But other uh, Clostridio perpharynges type C and D, they are also very, very dangerous for your goat. So it's very, very important to also make sure that you vaccinate your animal to avoid all these problems. And the, the unfortunate bit about the tetanus, the Clostridio perpharynges type C, even D, you are almost unrecognizable. They can just come today, two, three days, the goat is gone and you can't even tell how it died, what caused it, that sort of thing. So it's very, very important to be careful with these diseases, this, 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 these viral diseases that, are, um, that, that have a huge impact into, in, into your herd. And uh, uh, Clostridio perpharynges type C and D, tetanus, uh, for me, the third most important disease that we must vaccinate our goats against here in Tanzania. The fourth important disease to vaccinate your goats against is brucellosis. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of farmers, this will take them by surprise because a lot of them do not know that there is brucellosis here in Tanzania. They think that brucellosis here in Tanzania is only in cows. But that is not the case. Contagious abortion that is caused by brucellosis in Tanzania is very, very high. Anytime you see goats aborting around the same time, many of them in high number, get some alarm that it is a contagious kind of abortion. It's not a case where an animal has been uh, head-butted by another, another goat and therefore, you know, that has caused it to abort. It's not the case of whereby the animal was just weak, it was just sick or something like that, because that would not cause a sort of like uh, uh, a, a, a peak of, at a certain period of time or, you know, a huge number of goats all, you know, aborting around the same, around the same time. Or you experience those goats, you know, every time they, 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 they get pregnant, they abort, they get pregnant again, they abort, they get pregnant again, they abort. Then you should be sure that brucellosis is present here in Tanzania. I'm speaking from experience because here at Shambani Farm we did experience this and we took samples to the national uh, laboratory and they made their test, they took their test and they confirmed that those goats had brucellosis. So this is very very important and especially if you're taking goats milk Remember, this can be transferred to human beings as well. If you're taking goat's milk, make sure you test your milk to make sure that it does not have brucella in it. So for me, these are the four most important diseases here in Tanzania that as a farmer, you must vaccinate your goats against because they can cause you huge, huge losses. There are many other diseases, as I had mentioned earlier, but they are not important because they are not so contagious. They will not attack all your animals at once, and therefore you can still find ways to counter them. I will still advise you to vaccinate your animals against, but if they're not such a huge threat, 
in your farm, you've never experienced them, then there is no need to. So one case example that I'd given is the uh, off, off which others call scurvy or sore mouth. This can clear itself without you medicating the goat in, you know, two to three weeks. So it's not such a huge threat at your farm. But um, there's also Rift Valley fever. If it is present in your area, vaccinate your animal against it. There is foot and mouth. If it is present in your, in your area, vaccinate your goats against it. So as I said, the rule of the thumb is vaccinate your goats against diseases that are present in your area. This will help you to protect your animals and make sure that you avoid huge losses because of carelessness, such as failure to protect your animals through immunization. So that's it from Shambani Farm. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have comments, if you have counter arguments, please, please, please feel free to leave us a comment down below on the comment section so that we all interact and learn together and journey together in this wonderful journey of God farming. Thank you and see you in the next video. Cheers.